video, I'd like to show you how to determine the average rate of a chemical reaction. I'd like to do that graphically and use the reaction, the decomposition of N2O5 into NO2 and O2. Now, a rate of reaction has the units sort of like other rates that you're familiar with, like miles per hour or meters per second. In this case, we're going to have molarity versus time. Now, we have a coordinate axis here. On the y-axis is the concentration of the reactant. And on the x-axis is time in hours. Now, I'm going to make some marks on both axes. Make that one molar and mark two points in time here, one hour and two hours, and also zero. Now imagine what this graph would look like as the reaction proceeds. If you guessed it would look something like this, you're right. And let's just assume that one hour the concentration of N2O5 is 0.5 molar. And the concentration at 2 hours is, let's estimate that to be, 0.25. So we can see we have two points on the curve. We selected two points. Now, to determine the average rate of the chemical reaction is very similar to determining the slope of, say, a straight line. You take the difference between the concentrations and the difference between the times. So, in this case, we'll have 0.5 molar subtracted by 0.25. Molar. And then we have to match up the corresponding times, because 0.5 corresponds to one hour, and 0.25 corresponds to two hours. So it's one minus two. Now, that's going to make a negative number. So it's going to be 0.25 in the numerator divided by negative one, which is negative 0.25. That seems kind of odd, negative sign. Well, that's indicative of the reactant decreasing in concentration over time. So if you end up with a negative reaction rate, you must be talking about a reactant. So in summary, given two points, during, given two times in a reaction, and given the corresponding concentrations at those times, we calculate the average rate of reaction by simply taking the difference in the concentrations and dividing them by dividing that difference by the corresponding difference in time, making sure you're matching up your time with the concentrations to get the correct sign. Next, I'll show you how to approach it if we're considering a product. For NO2, the graph would look something like this, where T equals zero, the concentration is zero, and the concentration increases gradually over time. Now let's pick the same two times, one hour and two hours, and we find that the concentration at one hour is one molar, and the concentration at two hours is 1.5 molar. But we take the same approach as we did previously, we have two points, and let's just pretend we're going to take the slope of a line. And we'll take the difference between the concentrations and the difference between the times, and we'll divide them. So the rate, my pen back, the rate is 1.5 subtract 1, difference between the molarities. And the denominator 
is going to be 2 minus 1. And it's 2 because at 2 hours, which corresponds to 1.5 molar, and 1 hour corresponds to 1 molar, as we can see by these two points. So we do the math, we find that it's 0 0.5 divided by 1, which is 0.5. In this case, the rate is positive, which should make sense because we are forming product. Next, I'd like you to try a few problems. Here's a problem I'd like you to try. The reaction of phenyl acetate and water produces acetic acid and phenol. For a particular experiment, the concentration of phenyl acetate, its reactant, at t equals 5 minutes is 0.15 molar. The concentration later at 25 minutes decreases to 0 0.05 molar. Determine the average rate of the reaction. Now I didn't draw a graph here and it's not necessary to draw a graph. If you understand how to do this you could approach it without a graph. So give it a shot. Pause the video. Check your answer in a few minutes. Well, I approach the problem by setting up a table with time and molarity. Well, at 5 minutes, corresponding molarity is 0.15, and at 25 minutes, corresponding molarity is 0.05. And I set up my equation as such, 0.15 minus 0.05, and 5 minus 25, making sure I have the concentration corresponding with the particular time. And this is going to be negative. It makes sense because we're decreasing our um, concentration of reactant. So negative 0 0.0050 molar per minute. We'll try one more. This problem reads, the concentration of C6H5OH, the product, at t equals 5 minutes is 0 0.055 molar and the concentration at t equals 25 minutes is 0.155 molar. Determine the average rate of the reaction. Well, give it a shot, pause the video, and come back and check your answer. Well, I approach it the same way. I set up a table and set up the equation where I have the corresponding concentrations and times and when looking at this, taking the difference, there's a negative in the numerator and a negative in the denominator, which makes the final answer positive. And that makes sense, because we're talking about product, formation of product, so the rate is going to be positive.